Hey everybody, this is Bobby Dees, Wildlife Specialist for Record Rack Deer Feeds, here today with your weekly nutrition tip. I'd like to talk a little bit today about what nutrients are most limiting for whitetail deer in December and January. Um, really, if you think about it, uh, habitat conditions are as depleted as they get. Our deer are kind of coming to the tail end of the rut, so bucks have run a lot of body condition off. Our does are just trying to maintain, and those younger deer are still growing physiologically. So the nutrient requirements of our herd are still up there, and there's just not a, a whole lot of groceries out there uh, that, that Mother Nature's providing. So, so what's the most limiting? And there's been you know, some studies done that looking at this time of year where uh, the primary one that comes to mind, they were looking at uh, a corn, uh, cut corn field versus a soybean food plot and what they found is those post rut bucks really preferred the corn just because they were seeking carbohydrates or energy where the does and younger deer that weren't mature yet physiologically were hitting the soybeans because they were looking for protein and that really kind of speaks to the importance of if you're going to plant food plots you know uh, plant something that's going to have the diversity to have protein energy and kind of meet all of that so you can fill all the holes that might be missing uh, for your herd but what uh, the problem we run into with food plots particularly if you live where i live is in december and january unless you're lucky enough to get some really timely rains this is what our food plots look like um, they browse them down uh, next to nothing if you can get them to come up at all i mean typically the water is the limiting nutrient not the over browsing pressure but uh, we really can't rely on food plots, so we have to rely on supplemental feed. And there's a lot of different supplemental feeds that are out there um, that really kind of market to this point, like a post-rut ration. And I mean, I've seen rations for every stage of production, and I really think that's more of a marketing ploy than anything, just because you don't really want to feed one particular age structure. You want to feed something that's going to meet the needs of everything out there, uh, you know, things that might be protein deficient, energy deficient, whatever. And uh, really the main nutrient requirements that you're worried about if you're just looking at a feed tag, you want something that's at least 16% protein, at least 3% fat, has a good calcium and phosphorus ratio, and some trace mineral in there obviously. But the main thing that you got to worry about that's not on the tag is how much grain is in that ration. <clears throat> if you feed a ration that's got a whole lot of grain or starch in it, you can actually kill deer with feed. By, uh, you mess with the pH of the room in the, the, the largest uh, stomach that a deer has. You mess with the pH that starts killing the bugs in it. <clears throat> that causes acidosis and that can kill the deer. So uh, that's definitely something we don't want to do, but something to, to really consider. And, you know, my best advice on that is if you're worried about, you know, whether this ration is safe to feed at this time of year, talk to a nutritionist. I mean, that's what we're here for. So anyways, if you'd like to learn more about supplemental feeding, you'd like to learn more about Record Rack, look us up at recordrack.com and give us a call. Thanks.